Linux Mint offers a variety of ways to install software. Some users prefer graphical interfaces for simplicity. Others love the command line for control. But sometimes you don't have the luxury of using your preferred method. You may find an application you like and you're forced to install it the way the developer releases it. So it comes down to Linux's flexibility and long-standing uh, open source philosophy. I mean, it may seem disorganized or clunky at times, but it really does open up a lot more choices for users and the developers. So today I'm going to show you eight ways to install applications in Linux Mint. So number one is the software manager. This comes pre-installed in Linux Mint. This is best for beginners. It has a graphical interface similar to like an app store. Uh, you browse by categories or search by name and it automatically handles all the dependencies that that application may need. The software manager, it simplifies software management for the users. It offers a like a curated collection of compatible and safe applications. It acts as like a central hub for browsing and searching, installing software from the Linux Mint repositories and Flatpak sources. It's clean and intuitive. It primarily pulls applications from the official Linux Mint repositories. And of course, the software manager being the standard for Linux Mint, it just ensures a higher level of safety and compatibility compared to downloading from like random websites. And the software manager handles all the installation of updates for the installed software that is installed through this manager. So while the software manager is the recommended tool for beginners, Linux Mint does also provide number two, which is called the Synaptic Package Manager. It's a more advanced tool for managing software with more granular control. So Synaptic Package Manager is not installed by default in the latest versions of Linux Mint, specifically Linux Mint 22.1 and later. While it previously was included, uh, the Linux Mint team removed it as a default installation in the newer versions, but it's still available in the software manager right here. The Linux Mint team just figured that beginners and users unfamiliar with Synaptic could potentially break their system by using it incorrectly. And while Synaptic is a powerful tool, its primary function for Linux Mint was as the back end for the update manager. And with changes to the update process, uh, Synaptic wasn't needed anymore for that purpose. But as I say, it's still available here in the repositories and it can be installed through this software manager. And it is a powerful graphical front end for the APT package management system. Uh, it gives users fine-grained control over software packages. Uh, you get advanced search and filtering options. Uh, you have access to all packages in the APT repositories, including libraries and developmental tools. And it's ideal for advanced users who want full control over package installation and the removal and their upgrades. And it can install packages that are not visible in the standard software manager. And a couple of the cons to Synaptic Package Manager, it's, it's not beginner friendly and its interface can feel a little outdated, but it is a great package manager. Number three, the command line. Using the command line to install packages in Linux Mint can feel a bit like wielding a lightsaber. I mean, it's sleek and powerful if you know what you're doing, but it's a little bit intimidating at first. Some of the pros are one liner commands like sudo apt install. There's no clicking through menus. It's instant. You have more control over specific uh, exact versions, not just picking the one that's available in the software manager or whatever. You can use flags for custom setups. You can access more packages. There may be some packages that don't even appear in the graphical interfaces like software manager, but you can, they're easily available through APT and other managers from the command line. I mean, there's also scripting and automation for, you know, setups of replicating environments. And you just write a script with your APT install commands and off you go. And a lot of people suggest that there's better learning opportunities using the terminal because it teaches you how exactly Linux works under the hood. It helps you kind of become more self-sufficient and confident with system maintenance. I know that many users shy away from the command line, especially after migrating from Windows or Mac, where it's pretty much eliminated. However, the command line is great for advanced users and people wanting to understand Linux more. Number four, deb files. Deb files are like the drop dead easiest way to install programs in Linux Mint. They're just like exe files in Windows. All you have to do is download it from a trusted source like an official website. You double click on it to install it and you can, well, you can double click on it to install it or you can install them from the terminal and It'll ask you to install all the dependencies. 
You click OK, install, you're done. You're good to go. Simple, easy. Number five, Flatpak. Flatpak is a way to install and run apps on any Linux system, no matter which version or distribution you're using, like Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, and those like that. Uh, think of it like this. Flatpak is a suitcase that comes with everything an app needs to work. The app itself, plus all its tools, supplies, you know, dependencies. So it doesn't matter what kind of uh, Linux system you, you bring it into, it just works. So why would you use Flatpak? Well, Flatpak is universal. It works on almost all Linux distributions. It's self-contained. I mean, it brings its own library, so you don't break or depend on your system setup. Um, apps run in sandbox, meaning they're isolated from the rest of your system unless you give them permission. Uh, and there's easily updated. Flatpak apps can update themselves without needing system-wide changes. And to get Flatpak apps, you get them from a central app store called FlatHub. It's like the Linux version of the App Store or Google Play. Now, Flatpak comes pre-installed on Linux Mint 18.3 and newer. So if you're running a recent version, uh, you're good to go right out of the box. But one thing you might need to do, you might need to enable Flatpak. Now, if you're running the software manager and you want Flatpak apps to show up there, you just have to make sure that the Flatpak plugin is installed. All you do is type in sudo apt install gnome hyphen software hyphen plugin hyphen Flatpak. Number six, Snap. Snap is a universal package management system developed by Canonical. Uh, they're the folks behind Ubuntu. Snap install is the command used to install Snap packages. They're called snaps on Linux Mint. But there's a twist. It's a it's a terminal command. Uh, like you type in sudo snap install in the package name. This installs a snap package, which is self-contained, uh, bundled with all of its dependencies. Linux Mint has blocked snap support by default due to concerns over control, transparency, and software freedom. So I'll put a link in the description below as to why Linux Mint has disabled Snap. And um, I kind of agree with it. So I don't enable Snap on my system. So the way that Linux Mint has actually restricted Snap is that it has placed a file called nosnap.pref in the etc slash apt slash preferences.d folder. So if you want to install Snap packages, you have to delete that file or you have to change the name of it. Snap apps can be slower to launch, larger in size, and less integrated with Mint's desktop environment. So for that reason, I don't use Snap packages. Number seven, app image files. App image files are portable apps. Uh, there's no installation required. You just make executable and run. It bundles an app and all of its dependencies into a single executable file. So you can run it on almost any Linux distribution without having to install anything. So all you have to do is right click on it, go to properties, go to permissions, and make sure that you turn on where it says allow executing a uh, file as a program. And then it's executable and all you have to do is click on an app image file, run it, you're good to go. Now app images don't auto update unless the developer has included that feature. So they don't integrate into your system. So the last one, number eight, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with it because it's kind of very complicated and there's a lot of uh, uh, information that has to go along with it. But uh, number eight is source code. Installing software from source code in Linux Mint is like cooking from scratch. You get full control, but it takes quite a few steps, uh, a lot more than using a package manager. Uh, there's a lot of tools involved. Uh, in, before anything else, you have to make sure your system has the tools needed to compile code. Um, you have to install the compilers. You have to download the source code. You have to configure the build. You have to compile the code. So to build from scratch like this is very laborious. It takes a lot of typing. It takes a lot of knowledge. And uh, it's just too much for me to go into right now. But it certainly is an option. A lot of times that developers will release uh, applications only with the source code. And then you have to build it. Um, but it certainly is a great thing to do if you want to learn more about how software is built. Um, it's certainly something to learn because sometimes there are applications that you can only get uh, from the source code. But it is a fun thing to know. It's kind of an, an interesting project if it's something that you want to get into and learn. So that is eight ways to install software in Linux Mint. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you later.